Hey guys, before starting this video, I just want to say something. I don't want you to just copy, paste and run my code because you think that you can do this or this is really difficult for you. Guys, I will teach you how to think and enjoy coding. I will explain each and every statement of this program so you can do it by yourself. It is possible that you might feel bored when I will be explaining the things you already know. I still remember the first time when I successfully written the double link list program by myself. And the experience, the feeling was great. I want you to experience the same feeling after watching this video. Let's get started. A double link list looks something like this. And this is our single link list. Single link list is like a one way bridge. Means you can go back. Double link list is like our two way bridge. We can move to next node as well as we can again go back to the previous one. I hope now you have understood the concept of doubly linked list. Now let's code. We have to code doubly linked list like this. Now let's pick up a small node. We need something to create this structure. And the answer is struct. Now next step, these two arrows are actually pointers. So we'll name one pointer as previous, that means PREV, and another one as next. And we need a data variable to store data. You can change the sequence. Why these pointers are of type node? Suppose there is an int variable. Now we want a pointer to point that variable. But what if I use float? It is not valid, we need to use integer. Similarly, these pointers are pointing to a node and the node is of type struct node. Therefore, these pointers are of type node. In C, we write struct node star previous. But in C++, you can skip the word struct and directly write node star previous. As I promise, I will explain everything. Now, we need a start pointer. Why we need a start pointer and why it is currently pointing to null? First, we need to understand how the list is created inside the memory. First, the start pointer is created and it points to null. When the first node is created, then the node is attached with the start pointer. And then the list goes on increasing. Without start pointer, we can't access the list. So start pointer is important. Now let's see about insertion. Code for insertion is not going to be the same in every situation. There are four cases. First case is to insert the first node in list. The start pointer is pointing to null and then we add our first node in doubly linked list. Second case is to insert node at the end of the list. This is similar to array, we add new node at the end of the list. The third case is to insert the new node after some node. For example, let's insert the black node after the blue node. So this is our updated doubly linked list. Now the last case is to insert new node at the beginning, that means at front of doubly linked list. Guys, if you are thinking something like this, please stop. I guarantee you, this is going to be thousand times easier than you think. Guys, now think. If we boot all the code in one function, then it's going to be really difficult. So we will create four functions for our four situations. And name this function according to their functionality. First, we will create a function called as add begin to add the node at the beginning of a double link list. Since we will be facing our first node condition only once and this is like our regular insertion operation, we will name this function as insert node. Now the last case, we will name this function as add after. 
Guys, there is one last thing remaining which is common in all these functions. We are inserting a new node. But where is the code for that new node? And we need to take input value from user. Because we are not going to insert an empty node and this operation is common in all three functions. So rather than writing the code three times, we will write the code in a function called as create node. Now let's code the function create node. Now think why we need this function. First, we need to write the code to allocate memory to our node using new operator. And second is to input data from user. For example, if the user enters 10, then this value should go inside the data variable. Let's start coding. What exactly this statement does? The new operator returns the allocated memory and we store this in a pointer called as n. We ask user to enter the data. And we directly put the value entered by user in the data variable. We use this arrow to access the variable or pointer. Using the pointer for example, if the user enters 10, then the 10 is stored in data variable. Now set the two pointers to null. It means that they are currently pointing to nothing. Now everything is done, we will return this pointer. Don't worry, if you don't know how this return statement works, I will explain it. The return type of this function is not star because we are returning a pointer of type node star. Now let's code inside node function. In inside node, we need to take care of two things. First, if the node is first node of the bleeding list and second, add the new node at the end of the list. Now, I just created a pointer temp. Why? Let's see. Create node will return a pointer. The end pointer will be replaced with temp. That's it. So to satisfy or check first condition, the start pointer is going to be null. Now, if the condition is true, we will say that a start pointer go point to the first node. Now, now the next condition that is insert at the end. Now it's your time to think. We have a doubly linked list with a start pointer. And our aim is to add this node at the end of the list. Do we need some kind of magic for this? Hell no. The solution is simple. We need the previous pointer in our node temp to point to the last node of doubly linked list. And the last node next pointer should point to our temp. And the next pointer of our temp automatically points to null. But there is one problem. To do all this stuff, we need to get control of the last node in the doubly linked list. The only way to get control is to get a pointer at that node. We'll name that pointer as traverse and first point it to start. Now to reach the end node, we will use a loop for our pointer and the loop will terminate when the next pointer of any node points to null. If it doesn't point to null, our pointer traverse is incremented. Now we can perform our operations. Traverse next is now points to temp. Temp previous now points to traverse. So this is our code combined. Now it's time for our last function add after. 
I hope you know the meaning of these two statements that is creating a temp pointer. Since we are adding a node after some node, we need to ask the user that after which value the node has to be inserted and we will store it in value variable. Now suppose this is our list. I want to insert a node after 20 which is 25. Now we need to get control to the node which is having data as 20. And the only way to do this is to use a pointer which is pointing to that node. So this time the condition of while loop will change. We will compare the data variable and the value variable to get to that node. Now it's time for the most difficult concept. I am taking a little bit time to explain you the scenario better. Now we just need to adjust the pointer to insert the data in the middle. I am writing the code and showing you the changes simultaneously. Temp previous is equal to traverse. It means that previous pointer in temp now points to traverse. Temp next equals traverse next. It means that next pointer in temp now points to traverse next. Traverse next previous equals temp. This sounds confusing, but it is not. Where is Traverse at 20? Where is Traverse next pointer pointing to? That is 30. And it means that previous of 30 now points to temp. Traverse next equals temp. It means that Traverse next pointer now points to temp. I hope you get it. You can pause the video. Display is the easiest thing. We create a traverse pointer. We will use a loop to traverse from start to end and output the data variable. Now it's time to delete our nodes. Deletion is simpler than insertion. In deletion, there are three cases. First, delete first node. The second one is going to be delete last node. The third one is going to be delete after some value. So let's code this thing. We name this function as delete back. Suppose this is our list and green arrow is our start pointer. Our aim is to delete the first node. So we will create a pointer called a stem and it will point to start. Now since we want to delete first node, we will increment our start pointer. And then delete temp. I hope you have watched my video on new and delete operator in C++. Now as you can see the first node is deleted. Now it's time to delete our last node. We will create a function called as delete end. Now this is our doubly linked list. This is our start pointer. Let's create a pointer called as traverse. And use of while loop to get at the end node. Now this statement is important. Now what is traverse previous? The block 30. And what is its next? We change it to null. And then we delete traverse and free your memory. Now the last thing in our code. This is our list. 
start pointer another pointer called as traverse suppose i want to delete a node after 20 that means we want to delete 30 we will use a loop to get our traverse pointer to point to 20 now this time we will create a pointer called tim which will point to the next node after traverse it means that tim will point to 30 traverse next equals tim next it means that traverse next pointer will now point to tim next node temp next previous equals traverse now what is temp 30 its next is 40 and its previous pointer will now point to 20 at the end we will delete the temp finally everything is done Guys, this is a W link list program. Uh, link to this code is in the description. So go on and play with the code. So this is our complete code. I did some comments. This is actually menu and switch case. I hope you know this already. So no need to explain. Let's build and run. It's taking time. Okay. Let's add a node 10, 20, then 30. I just added 10, 20, 30. Uh, let's display it by clicking 7. 10, 20, 30 is displayed. Now insert a node at first position. So, 1, now 1 is added at first position, now add 15 after 10, so third option, and 15 after 10, so 15 is added after 10, now let's delete last node. Option okay, 30 has been deleted, so it's working. Now, first node has been deleted, that is 1. Now, let's delete node after a given node. Okay, huh. so 6. after 10 so 15 has been deleted so our functions are working guys i hope you can imagine the amount of work and time i invested in this video the only thing i want from you is to click on that like button so that this video will appear on top of youtube search and please comment a lot and don't be lazy to share something good with your friends thanks for watching